going to start this whole program off with a brace. Now the deal with the brace is, this is the skill that's going to keep you right side up. With a good brace, you can get down the river without ever tipping over. Now when do you need to learn to do the roll? When your brace fails. Let's start with the brace. What is it? Essentially, it's using your paddle as a set of outriggers. With the right skills, you can be tipping over, but using your paddle, you can keep yourself from going all the way over. Not only is the brace one of the coolest things ever because it keeps your boat right side up, but also when you learn the brace, you're going to learn two key elements to the roll. You're going to learn the proper body position that you should be finishing your roll in, as well as the proper paddle position. What this means to you is you learn the brace first, the roll is going to come a lot easier. There's a couple concepts we really need to understand before we learn the skills of the brace. Every time you lift your body up, it takes a certain amount of work. In fact, work is force times distance. So if you lift your body twice as high when you do your brace as somebody else, it takes twice as much work than the other person. And what that means is the easiest and most successful braces are done with the head and body as down as low as possible. All right? The other key element is most people think your goal is to try to keep your head and body from going in the water when you're tipping over. That's not the case. In fact, think about this for a second. If your head is on an average about 13 pounds when it's out of the water, how much does it weigh when it's in the water? It weighs zero. It doesn't weigh anything. It actually floats. So if you feel yourself falling and you actually get your head and body to go down and hit in the water, the water will support you, re requiring less force for the brace. Those are two key elements that are going to help you for both the roll and the brace. What are they again? Number one, head and body stay as low as possible. Number two, in the water takes less energy than out of the water. Okay, the body position of course, as we learned, was to be all the way down and back with our body. Now the this important thing is to keep the boat right side up when you lean back. Now to do that, you need to lift up on your right knee if you're falling over to the right. You need to lift up on your right knee, that means you also need to tighten up your muscles over here and your side, all the way up to your neck. All of your right muscles need to be tight. What that does is hold your head and body down. All right? So head and body stays down. That's the body position. So one more time, your objective for maximum uh, stability and the most successful brace is to be all the way down and back. Paddle position. Your paddle should stay perpendicular to the boat. Perpendicular to the boat gives you the most leverage combined with reaching as far away from the boat as possible. Those two things give you the most leverage. Right? Paddle in here, you don't have as much leverage as paddle out here. The most common mistake for people is to put the paddle behind you. Your objective is perpendicular and straight out. One more common mistake for the paddle position is for the top hand to be up high. When the top hand is up high, the paddle wants to dive in the water. We want the paddle to get, have a good purchase on the water. So the paddle needs to be as flat to the water as possible. That means the top hand stays low and reaches as far out as you can. Okay? All right. I think we're ready to add some water. Okay, now that we're in the water, the first thing we need to do is find the balance point of the boat. Go ahead and lean your body all the way back, head all the way down. You should be able to get your head to just touch the water before you lose your balance. Now you need to either have somebody there spotting you or you need to have your paddle in it ready for the slap position. Next thing you're going to do is go ahead and lay your head and body all the way back into that brace position. Reach your paddle out as far from the boat as you can, perpendicular to the boat, as far as you can reach. Keep that blade just above the water. As soon as your head touches the water, slap the water and roll your body back over the boat. As soon as it's over the center of the boat, go ahead and sit up. All right, you've done a brace. Very cool. Hard to believe that you can actually get your head and body to touch the water and brace up. It's that easy. You've just learned the paddle and body positions for the brace. And you've actually successfully brought your head all the way down to the water and braced back up. This is a monumental moment in your kayaking. Now, the reality is this is a very simple skill. It's very easy. It's not physically hard. However, intuitively, your entire kayaking career is going to be tempting for you to try to lift your head and body straight up, which does the opposite of the brace. When you lift your head and body straight up, not only does it require more work because you're lifting it up higher, but you're also tipping the boat over on yourself. Remember that when you do the brace, you're lifting up on your right knee and you're tightening up the right side of your body. 
If you try to lift your body straight up, what muscles do you need to use? You end up using the left side of your body. And what does that do? That pulls the boat on top of you. Remember, the brace is only goal is to keep the boat right side up, not to keep your body out of the water. So your, your kayaking career, as far as your bracing goes, is completely dependent upon developing the habit of keeping your head and body as low as possible to the water when you brace. If you can do this, your role is going to be hugely successful. If you have trouble with this, you're also going to have trouble with the roll. Before we move on to the roll, let's practice our brace. There's a couple things we're going to do. Number one, we're going to get better at the brace. We're going to practice it deeper in the water. We're also going to learn a few more key elements. First thing I want you to do is always look at your paddle when you're bracing. I want your eyes on the paddle blade that's doing the brace. Okay, let's go ahead and practice. We've already laid all the way down and back until our head touched the water. Then we slap the water and brace up. Now let's try tipping straight over to the side. You just feel yourself falling, then throw your head and body down. Now brace up. Okay, let's try it again. This time let your head slap the water. In fact, the harder your head and body hit the water before you brace, the easier the brace is going to be. Rule number one, never try to keep your head and body from touching the water when you're practicing the brace. You want to go ahead and let it drop in. Most people, as they start getting down to the water, they try to just keep it out of the water a little bit. What I want you to do is actually slap the water with your head. See that? Slap the water with your head, then brace up. Nice. Well done. Let's go ahead and go a little deeper. Slap the water, try to get your whole shoulder in the water. Splash. Brace up. Hey, you want to see what happens when you just let it go a little further? It looks like this. Tip over. Splash. Ooh, the boat's all the way upside down. Brace up. Wait a second, that was an Eskimo roll. Yeah, it was an Eskimo roll, but guess what? The brace and the Eskimo roll are one and the same. The only thing that's different is on the brace, you don't ever let the boat tip over. But if the boat does tip over, the Eskimo roll is nothing other than a brace back up. So there's only one thing that you don't know how to do to brace back up from upside down. It's called the hip snap. That's going to the roll. Let's do that next.